So in this tutorial, we're going to go over Photoshop adjustments, brightness contrast, and tone curves, and other adjustments in the adjustment sublayer. First, let's set up a new page. You can either go up to File, New, or hold Control and hit N. For now, let's use US Paper with a width of 32 by 22 by 150. And let's grab an image off the internet. This one looks good, just that it has some blues, some greens, and everything else. What we'll do is just paste it in here. I'm going to move it over here so we can see all the adjustments that we do make. So let's go back to our layers here, and let's duplicate. And let's just drag it over slightly so we can see a variation between the original to where we go throughout this tutorial. So first, let's go to Photoshop's Adjustments. So up in the Image tab, we can come down to Adjustments. Let's adjust the brightness and the contrast. So pretty straightforward. Brightness obviously makes it darker. And con contrast brings out the black and white points. Now if we click Legacy, it over-exaggerates, almost bringing a posterized feel to everything, or completely darkens most everything. Another option is to hit Auto. Not a big difference between the original and the one we had just adjusted, but slight. Let's bring up the contrast a little bit and the brightness. And then you just click OK. So again, let's duplicate. slide this layer over. And now we're going to work with tone curves. So tone curves are located in the image adjustments and under just curves. Here we can mess with the exposure, the RGB values, CMYK, and other pigment values within the ink. Just by sliding this histograph around, we get different variations of what the image is with exposure. You got your darks and your lights, and you can bring it around. It also has the option for auto again. Again, slight little variation there. Or we can just adjust the reds in the image, bring them out lighter. Bring them out to a more green beyond its spectrum. Or we can do color picking. So bring out highlights that you only want to see. Or again, do auto. Auto seems to work pretty well on this image. Other images will not be like this. So again, let's duplicate one more time. Slide over. And then let's go to the images, adjustments again. Let's apply a photo filter. This would be helpful if you, within a rendering for an architectural image, if you want to make it a little bit warmer, you can have like a kind of a sepia view. Or if you want to make it a little bit cooler, bring out the blues more or less or has standard setups, Zapia again, or colorize more, or you can actually pick your own custom color. And one more time, we'll duplicate layer, slide it over, and we'll show you one more filter. All these filters should be kind of experimented with and find which ones you like. Actually, we'll do two more. So let's do hue and saturation. So this is very helpful if you need to work to black and white. So obviously, saturation all the way down will be black and white throughout the space. You can bring up the saturation. And if you hit colorize, you're able to pick a color that you prefer, and a more or less overlay. 
You also can adjust the lightness of everything. So for now, let's make it black and white. Hit OK. And the last time we'll do this, move this image over again, and we'll go to threshold. Now threshold is using the lights and the darks to make edges. So here, we can start to adjust it, and this can be helpful for outlining or other purposes. And we can adjust the detail of everything. Very helpful for stencils and finding edges to a, a photo. So again, all these adjustments are located up in the image adjustments, and you have all these different options that you can experiment with and find which one you personally like.